world. So yes. many people downloaded that. There's been plenty of fallout as well from what he said, and some of it's been pretty ugly. So joining us now is Michael Bako, sports editor for DailyNational.com. Thanks for coming in, and let's Absolutely. start off with the ugly. Corey and I were talking about yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, some of these tweets, you know, I, I saw that. I thought mm -hmm. it was more humorous than anything else, but there sure. are people out there that were just writing these Nasty. vile things on Absolutely. Twitter. Absolutely. And then he actually responded to some of the vile things on Twitter with this. I'll, I'll read his tweet that he tweeted out yesterday. Uh, here it is on screen. Last night shows that racism is still alive and well and that's so sad at least some people respect mlk's dream people i, I i'm stunned that people were so upset by what that 20 seconds of yeah. a video mm -hmm. That two people had beef with each other and he just you know, decided to take his stage? You know, taking the other side of that, there were other tweets that came from former coaches. Tony Dungy, probably the most respected person yeah. in the NFL, tweeted, show a little class. Matt Harvey, star pitcher for the Mets. Same thing, Justin Verlander, other giant players. So, yes, there, it, anytime you do something in the Twitter sphere, you are going to bring out the crazies. You're going to bring out the people that want to hide behind social media in sure. a way. And as wrong as he was for the post-game comments, the tweet afterwards defending himself and pointing out the racism and the people that were attacking him. I think that there's you know, no way that you can't be in his no, corner I, I, in terms of absolutely. that. Absolutely. I mean, if you were to read some of these tweets, we can't repeat them on the air, but it's just awful. So it's just stupid, ignorant stuff out there. Also, he did apologize, by the way, for, for his comment Comments, in For the Rain. Yeah. Did yeah, he? He, he, he definitely apologized, and some people may look at that as a little bit too late. You know, you go, you go on TV. I'm surprised that things like this don't happen more often, to be, to be honest with you. That was a hard-fought game. The Seahawks are going to the Super Bowl. Player achieving his dream, making an all-time play that he'll yeah. be remembered for. Unfortunately, now he's going to be remembered as much for the play as for what he said in the postgame game. All right, conference. let's talk about this because we're talking about the big game. Peyton and me and you were talking just yeah. off camera. I mean, he's got endorsements coming up. He's the person that everyone's going to be putting the spotlight on yep. going into the Super Bowl. Absolutely, and he's probably the happiest person that Richard Sherman went out and did this. You have the New York spotlight in his brother Eli's backyard, in Eli's stadium. Two weeks of pressure and and uh, you know everything focused on Peyton. Richard Sherman taking some of that spotlight away. Peyton can, can sit back and not enjoy the week, but he certainly doesn't have the extreme spotlight that he would have had on him. All right, interesting stuff. Richard Sherman, you were saying before, a very good player, not a household name. I didn't know who he was. Now he and is. now he is. And <laughs> now he is. And he will probably be cashing in big time. You would think. You, you would think, but I wonder what kind of product would want to be associated with him. It's not the wholesome image and the winning image of Slim Peyton Jims. Manning. Slim Jim. Like, like Macho Man. There's nothing to do with Slim Jim. It almost Michael, seemed like wrestling. we got to right, go, but thank care. you so much. <laughs> All right, 6.50 now.